Good morning, everyone. Today is Tuesday, September 17th. And today we will cover the trades for Yield Max Funds, Tesla, Kony, and Vidi, and Misty. Also, at the end of the video, I'm going to talk about my options trades I did yesterday, you know, in a little more detail than I usually do. And the reason I'm going to do this is because there's actually no trade. So the Yield Max update would be quicker than usual. So we have some time now to talk about some options trading. But before all that, I just wanted to say thank you uh, to the most recent members who joined uh, CrossFit Carnivore, Carol Pranther, Luther Jones, Juan Pablo Rodriguez, Melissa Wang, Raga, JB, Hurricane, and so on. I believe I covered, you know, the rest of these, um, you know, earlier on because they were they joined, you know, when I first started. If you're wondering, uh, you know, what the hell I'm talking about is, you know, YouTube has this option for, you know, membership, you know, and a lot of channels do it, kind of abuse it in a way. Um, why did I do it? I just decided to say, okay, you know, because a lot of people reach out, how can I support your channel further? Um, so this would just be a way. Uh, so there's two options. There's 99 cents, which basically gives you, you know, special badges, emojis, etc. It's just a way to support it, right? And that's the simple way. Uh, but if you wanted to go <clears throat> a little further, I did create a ROD Wolf Pack, um, you know, which is four ninety nine. But this, you know, eventually will be, you know, early. Well, I already did try the early access to select videos, uh, so that option does work. Unfortunately, I can't do a premiere when I do that, so it does go private to the members and then goes available to the public after. And then I do some members only exclusive videos. I haven't done. Uh, well, I've done uh, options trading for that. So when I do record myself making the daily trades, I will post those as exclusive. I'm probably going to make the dividend car series exclusive as well. Uh, then we'll do members only Q&A. When I get more people, I'll probably start that because right now there's, you know, there's only 20. I oh, no. Well, that's for the Wolfpack. I'm not sure how, the, how many, probably 10 people. So that's not enough really at the moment. And then, um, by the way, there's a, I did you know, create the option to create a, a separate channel for those that wanted to have it, you know, um, but I need everyone's Discord name, actually. So if you are a member, reach out to me and send me your Discord name. And then obviously priority uh, reply to comments. I do try to get to everyone's comments, but if you have the big blue badge, obviously it sticks out a little more. So I wanted to just share that real quick because I know I haven't talked about it uh, but if you're wondering how there's a join button on every video and it'll come up you know explain the uh, options so let's get to the fun part why we're all here as I said do you believe it no trades it has been a long ass time since there has been no trades thank god because yesterday was a very busy day after work and I got home very late and forget it I wouldn't have had time and I would have been up late. So thank you, Yield Max, for no trades. All right, so where do we stand? Tesla has two synthetics. We know that 225, 230, both of which expire November 15th. 60 days away. You know, nothing new there. What is a synthetic? I mean, a synthetic is, you know, as they say, long call, short put. So they buy a call and they sell a put. Essentially, it's an offset of one another. Um, you know, and they do it at a strike price that's at the money at the time. More than likely, the call costs more than the put. So there is a short, you know, a little expense. If, if you see here, like when they started this position, it's 458000 So, um, and then this, you know, acts as, you know, it represents essentially as owning the shares. You know, they call it a poor man covered call. I see everyone saying PMCC. I didn't know it has an acronym now. But um, basically, why do they call it that? It's because you're not fronting, <clears throat> you're not using all your money to physically buy the shares. You're just doing it via call, right? If that makes sense. All right, so anyway, enough of that. September, how, how did we do yesterday? It was Monday, you know, everyone loves Mondays. Tesla went down 1.54%, not terrible. Tesla went down 0.3%. See, that's really good. That's good stuff. That means their strikes are close. So let's see uh, 
how yesterday overall closed out. Let me uh, zoom in so you can see everything. All right, so what do we got going for this week? Uh, we kind of covered it yesterday in the Monday recap. Uh, we got 30,000, 48 contracts, 230 strike. This is now 1.44% out of the money. It was much worse yesterday. So the fact that it went down, that Tesla went down yesterday is a good thing because not only did we get rid of a day, one day in time value, and then we went down on top of it. So we're a little closer to winning the contract, one day closer. You know, one day at a time, that's all we could do. Um, and then we look at the other contract, 1,315 uh, contracts, 240 strike price, 5.85% out of the money. So obviously, since Tesla went down, this one you know, did good as well. All right, so outstanding shares did go up by 350,000. So Tesla's still bringing in the shareholders. 30 day IV, 62%. Outstanding shares, 53,375,000. Total net income, unfortunately, it's a loss for the weekly income for September. So we will stop there and move on to the next tab. Reaction, good work. Good work, Tesla. You listened. 15 days till declaration date. This is group A. So it's the first one that, that, that's going to declare based on the new uh, schedule. All right. They do have synthetic income of 44 mil. But if you net the loss from the short call income, that comes to $13 million uh, income for the month, which is 24 cents. Obviously, that's not enough uh, to make a payment. Rodimator, as you know, uses the uh, weekly covered calls to do the estimate. So since that's negative, we cannot use that. So we will just look at the IV. And since the implied volatility is 63 cents, that comes to 68 cents. Why do I have this? Because Yieldmax and Jay, they always say they strive to, and they strive for an annualized yield of whatever the IV is. And the IV is 63%. So if they're striving for 68 cents payout for the next month, we'll see. All right, outstanding holdings, nothing to really talk about here either. Honestly, we just got the synthetic that expires in November and we got the weekly call, which is a little cheaper to close, but we'll see how this plays out. Look at that uh, total net assets, 700 mil. Uh, we got the, uh, the NAV at 1313 and the trade price at 1310. All right, let's move on. When there's no trades, we just keep it in order of launch date. So Tesla launched first and Vidi was second. So NVIDIA has a synthetic 109. They have 83,140 contracts. This is in a good position. They're uh, priced, you know, NVIDIA is priced 7.14% above that synthetic, which means this synthetic is worth money at the moment. Um, 32 days till expiration on this. So they got time to play around and think about it. But let's see how NVIDIA did yesterday. So NVIDIA went down 1.95%. And VD, look at that. It look at that. Look at that. That's a beautiful thing. And VD only went down 0.17%. So yeah, as much as it sucks being like in the money, you know, we were in the money. We, yesterday we were in like 5% in the money on our uh, calls. So yeah, that sucks. But if the actual underlying goes down when we're in the money, you know, the uh the calls, you know. They decrease, like how much we have to pay to close them, they decrease. And the fact that there was so, you know, so much in the money, look how much, you know, it helped us out. We only went down 0.17%. We almost stayed flat. We nearly stayed flat when NVIDIA went down nearly 2%. So that's pretty good. Again, you don't want to be in the money, but in times like this, it's like, okay, it actually, you know, it looks good, right? It works out in our favor. But all that matters in the end is we make profits. We make profits from every transaction. And let's see. Are we headed that way? All right. So here's here's the lineup. 80,740 contracts and 2,400 contracts. So all contracts, 113 strike is now 3.24% in the money. As, as I mentioned, they were 5% in the money yesterday. So since NVIDIA went down, we are getting a little closer to actually making a profit um, when all said and done from the weekly. And um, yeah, and then obviously that'll add another, hopefully two possible two wins to, you know, our new tracker, which we tracked. If you saw yesterday's episode, we track wins and losses now. Uh, 
I'm not going to track them again because there's no change. Uh, so obviously, if you want to see that, you have to watch yesterday's video. Um, outstanding shares, nothing, no change. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm losing my voice again. Um, what do we got? 30 day IV, 49%. Outstanding shares, 41,075,000. Total net income, 9.6 mil. Distribution, 24 cents. Daily income, 2 cents a day. Daily yield, 0.09%. Annualize that, that's 31%. Yeah, this is, uh, yeah, rookie numbers nonetheless, but still, um, it's, a, it's a good result for yesterday. So thumbs up to NVIDIA going down you know, one step closer to winning our weeklies. All right, synthetic loss, 60 mil. So we just focus on the short call income. That comes to 24 cents per share, as we said. Throw that into the Rodimator, and that will give you 67 cents, which is a 35% yield. That's not what they strive for. They strive for 50% uh, right now, which is a 96 cent payment. But time will tell. We're about halfway through the month. Declaration date, oh, they got 22 days, so more than half a month left. Again, Group A kind of lost, I think, two days from the norm, but all the other groups, they have a little more time since it's the first time they're spreading these out. They have extra time to earn more money, so hopefully our next distribution will be a little larger than usual, but only if these funds perform, uh, perform well. All right, here's the synthetic and pink. That's a synthetic put. And then in orange, we got the call. So if you look at orange, orange is our friend, right? Think of orange as our friend. $97 million, that's our friend. $42 million, that's our enemy because that's our call. When we sold the call, we got a premium and we were happy, right? We got that premium. However, we always have to worry about when how much it costs to close, so right now, it cost $42 million to close. If NVIDIA goes down today, it will cost less to close tomorrow when we do this video. If NVIDIA goes up today, it's going to cost more. Again, there's other factors involved, such as time value. I know people like to use the word theta, right? That's a Greek word. We don't speak Greek here, though, because what you know? what's the point? Um, why confuse people? But either way, we have... To work, you know, this is what we have to worry about. All right. Right now, this is the concern. The weekly call, $42 million to close that position. And if NVIDIA continues to go down, this number will decrease and decrease and decrease. But if NVIDIA goes up and they have to pay a lot of money, guess what? They got that orange friend, they got backup, you know, to bail them out. Unfortunately, the orange friend is a package deal, you know. He can't go anywhere without his girl, and his girl costs money too. His girl costs $28 million right now. So yeah, like I said, unfortunately a package deal, but either way, between the two, there is still a net bailout money as of right now of $26.3 I don't know if you guys like that example, but I thought it made sense. All right, total net assets for NVIDIA, 948 mil. We got the NAV of 2309 and the trade price of 2310. All right, let's move on to the next one who launched, Kony. Kony's been, uh, you know, love-hate, man. People love Kony, and then they hate it when it goes down, you know? You got to be with it with the good times and the bad. All right, they got a synthetic 195. This is like, I don't know, man. This is a bad shape. 17% away. Oof. This one... You know, this orange guy, he's carrying, he's got a gold digger. And I'll show you, I'll show you why in the holdings. Uh, but this has 32 days to recover, so we'll see. Synthetic 155, much better position. They're 4.19% above. Also expires 32 days. We'll see how these play out. But how did coin do yesterday? Crypto was kind of like taking a crap yesterday, but coin actually did not. Coin only went down 0.95%. Coney went down 0.72%. As you know, Coney holdings is a freaking disaster, right? So I, you know, for the time being, until they close the positions, I'm not really going to get into the credit spreads unless, you know, unless they're actually getting close to making money. So let's just cover this, the calls that they sold. So for the calls that they sold, let's just go through the strike prices. They have a 162.50. That's the lowest one. That's 0.62% out of the money, clearly in danger. Then they have a 172.50, that's 6.81% uh, 
out of the money. That's with four trading days to go. That's with crypto. It's not safe, but we'll see. It's in a much better position than the other. And then they got a 170 and that's 5.26% out of the money. But the, you know, the largest position is the 17250. That's what we have to worry about. But again, they do have these credit spreads. So if they do get blown through, those credit spreads are there to help. I haven't, you know, they haven't used it yet. But again, do we want them to use it? Why the hell not, right? Again, it's all about learning as well. Some of you have never used a credit. I've never used a credit spread. I know what it is. I would love to see it in action. I would love to see it make a profit, um, you know, at the expense, good or bad. Um, and let's see, like, for example, the 16250. Okay, what's the, you know, the spread on that? They have a 17250. That's, you know, they bought a call. So if Coney closes up at like 180 for this week, which is doubtful, but if it does, you know, that that buy call that they did, that should be worth a nice amount of money. And then we can see like how much did it really profit, like, you know, percentage wise. And it'll get interesting. People, a lot of people are big fans of the credit spreads. We haven't had to use them, but overall, you know, it shouldn't damage the current strategy because as Jay said, they're still trying to yield what they want to yield, which is around the IV. So, you know, time will tell guys. Uh, outstanding shares did go up 150,000. So that's always good. You want to see your fund grow. Um, obviously, we're not taking advantage of that expense, that 0.99%. However, if you're in a fund that people are actually buying into over and over, then, I've, you know, that's a good thing versus a fund that's dying out. 30 day IV, 65%. Outstanding shares, 46,225,000. Net income, Yes, it's there, but it's basically nothing, but it's about a half a mil. It's a penny distribution. Daily income, not even a penny. Daily yield, 0.01%. Annualized yield, 2.65%. Remember, a few years, you know, maybe 10 years back, 2.65% yield. Oh, man, you'd be happy with that. Could you imagine? Newer investors, man, you guys are getting involved at a really good time. This crap did not exist you know, way back when. And it's just, it's a really good thing. Although a lot of people say it's a scam, it's a ripoff, it's a, you know, whatever. But, you know, they're not understanding how this is whole, all working. That's just my opinion. And it's, you know, a lot of people, they just, they do love being negative. That's just their mentality. So, as you know, that's half the problem. All right, reaction just like a meh, you know, nothing really happened. So nothing going on, nothing to talk about. 29 days till declaration date. All right, they have a synthetic loss. So nothing to talk about there. And short call income is essentially nothing as well. So forget the rotomator. Let's focus on the IV. 66%, 68 cents. It's not enough. All right, nothing to talk about here. But, you know, we talked about the gold digger. So... So we have the 195. This is our friend, but our friend is broke, right? 5.7 mil. He's broke. Why? He's got this gold digger up here who's taking his money, 64 mil. What we need to happen in order for our friend not to be broke is we actually need coin to go up. Okay. So again, the buy calls, they need coin to go up. The sell calls here, they need coin to go down. And then obviously we have the spreads. Um, I'm sorry, the sell calls are the negatives. But um, the spreads also root for it to go up. So we have more opportunity that if it goes up, we can make more money. That is the whole point of the spread. So now it just becomes a little more of a bullish play. All right. So that's enough of the synthetic party and the gold diggers. But we got a uh, total net asset of 572 mil, a NAV of 1239, trade price 1236. All right. Misty, Misty, Misty. We give Misty a hard time. Because Misty is, you know, it's almost the goat. It's almost. Nvidia's still the goat, in my opinion. And Misty's like right there. Just right there. All right, so they got a synthetic. It's a synthetic strike 140, 32 days away till expiration. They are priced 3.91% below that synthetic. However, so early that we don't have to worry about it. So let's MSTR had a rough day yesterday. MSTR went down 4.91%. Why? Well, because Bitcoin went down. 
And um, that's why it was surprising that coin didn't go down that much. However, coin is becoming less and less, you know, I'll say reliant on the, the, the movement of Bitcoin. I feel like it used to follow it much closer. Now it just doesn't seem to, which is fine. It, it is its own company after all. Um, and they do hold, you know, they make money, obviously, through crypto, advertising, whatever. But I don't know. We'll see. Anyway, um, MSTY, it was down 3.43%, still in the $21 range. So that's okay. But let's see where we stand for this week. Let me zoom out, try to get everything in there. All right, so we only got the one trade, and it's 33,290 contracts, 150 strike price. Now it's 11.5% out of the money. Yesterday it was around 6% out of the money. And obviously, since MSTR had a big drop, you know, for example, if you bought Mr., or I'm sorry, Misty yesterday, what is this telling you? It's telling you, you can possibly, like, if it recovers, possible upside of 11%. Like, that's amazing. Did I buy Misty yesterday? Yes, I yes I did, um, because I wanted to lower my cost basis on my dividend car journey. So I did buy Misty yesterday. All right, so outstanding shares did go up by fifty k. All right, so we got a thirty day IV eighty percent. Outstanding shares twenty two million one hundred and seventy five thousand. Total net income is a loss of fifteen point six mil. Unfortunately, all right, it's time, guys. Misty Fund Manager, hit that button. Hit that green button. It's time. We got 36 days to make it. All right. Synthetic income, 1.3 mil. Short call loss, 15 mil. So total income per share is in the, you know, it's not, there's no income. There's no income in the short call. There's no income on the total income. So we just have to look at the IV. And the IV is awesome. It is 80%. And if they yield that, it's $1.42. But yeah, hopefully they start making money. Uh, again, what do I track? I track taxable income. So this is the taxable income for the month. They lost money on the you know, short calls, unfortunately, but they did make some on the synthetic. And we'll see how the rest of this week plays out. So far, they look like they could win uh, this week. Obviously, it's very early. We have four trading days, though. <clears throat> Outstanding holdings. Is there a gold digger here? Yes, there is. Because um, so, you see our friend in orange, you know, Look how much he's worth and look how much she's worth. You know, too much jewelry he bought her. Anyway, what do we got in the calls? Uh, the weekly call, it's cost 84 cents to close. So obviously pretty good position to be in. Should they close it now? I don't think so. I think they should let it play out. Um, and we'll see how things uh, turn out. All right, so that's the update on all the funds. What we'll do now, we'll go to the pre-market. <clears throat> and then I'll share some options trades I did um, yesterday. Okay, get rid of that and go right here. Okay, guys, what do we got? All right, it is 5.33 a.m. Tesla is green. It's up 0.54%. It's at 227.95. Tesla is green. It's at 0.69%. It's at 1319. NVIDIA is green. It's up 0.29%. It's at 117.12. NVD is green. It's up 0.22%. It's at 2315. Coin. Coin, 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 coin. It's up 1.43%. 163.81. Coney is up point, I'm sorry, 1.38%. It's at 1253. MSTR is up 1.35%. It's at 136.35. MSTY is up 0.66%. It's at 2124. TSLL is up 1.04%. It's at 1070. Seems like $10 is the new range for TSLL. Uh, TNA, man. Ooh, green again. These, uh, you know, the Russell has been killing it. It's up 0.8%. It's at 4263. AMDY is up 0.07%. Uh, it's at 1386. AMZY is up 0.47%. It's at um, 1934. Bitcoin, it's up 1.54%, 58,784. I mean, everything's green, guys, everything. Uh, and Bitex is up 2.88%, it's at 2536. Okay, so that is the update um, on the Yield Max. 
you know, the yield max update. So for those of you that want to drop off because you don't care about my options trading, feel free. However, the key word, you got to wait to the end of the video. So let's get to my options trades. Um, so first, what do I got? I got Bitex, TSL. I got all four here. Okay. So I did four trades. So what happened is this past week uh, on or last Friday, all of my calls got assigned. So you know what that means? I'm starting all new wheels. What do I do? I do the wheel strategy, which means I sell puts. If I get assigned, I sell calls. And once all, you know, once I get assigned on the puts and then I sell calls and get assigned, that's a wheel. The wheel's over. So right now I don't have a wheel. So I'm starting a new wheel. So I play it aggressive, a little more aggressive than most. So I sell puts to, to start the wheel. Who am I selling puts on? Bitex, I sold a put, $23. I got 60 cents per share with one contract. With one contract, that's $60. TSLL, I sold a put for ten fifty, right? Why the hell not? I got 55 cents per share. That's 55 bucks. TSLL, I sold another put for nine fifty. This is into the, to the next week, I believe. Um, again, we'll look at it in more detail, but I made 31 bucks on that. And then I did another bit tax for 70 cents. Okay. So I do have this spreadsheet for those of you that follow me on the weekends. I do an options trading video and I update everyone with, um, you know, the trades that I do. Some of you that follow me daily, you may be interested in this. If you're trying to learn about options, um, as I do again, I just share how I did for the week. So why, first question is, why do I trade TSLL? Well, because look at their IV, 121%. 30 day IV is 121%. I'm basically trading them because of the IV. You know, the underlying, of course it matters. The underlying is Tesla, but it's a 2X movement of Tesla. So it's double risky. So whatever Tesla's IV is, I get double that. So the IV is, you know, Tesla's IV is probably around 60%. And then their IV is around 121%. So why am I trading TSLL? The IV. And Tesla, I trust not to go out of business. Bitex. Why do I trade Bitex? Well, look at the IV. 110%. Are you kidding me? Now, what is Bitex? It, it moves two times what Bitcoin does. So obviously, super risky, right? Bitcoin can do anything, any day. How does it move? Why does it move? Who the hell knows? But... Do I think Bitcoin's going to be around? Yes. Therefore, I trade it. I trade it for the IV. Also, take a look at the margin maintenance. I use margin now. I basically use margin to sell options. So since both of these are 50%, that's a beautiful thing. All right? It means I can borrow half of you know whatever I own at the time. Last but not least, I do trade TNA. Their margin maintenance is 75%, but I'll cut them a deal because they're the index. You figure since they're the index... Uh, they'd be a little less. However, they are triple leveraged. And triple leverage is no longer available um, unless, you know, you got in early. Direction got in early. And apparently ProShares got in early. They're grandfathered in. But TNA, their IV is 70%. 70%. They're a little more costly. They're $42. And, you know, I don't like to trade the more expensive ones because I, I, I like the 10 contract rule, which basically allows me to fix my screw ups 10 times over. But yeah, those are my three that I trade. And here's the 10 contract amount. So for TSLL, if I wanted to trade 10 contracts today, I need 10,590. Bittex, I need 24,650. And obviously you'd see TNA a little more expensive, 42,290, which it's almost my account balance. So that's why I'm mostly trading TSLL and Bittex. I trade them a little differently than I would trade TNA, okay? So sorry about that. Now we'll get to the trades. So again, four trades. Well, first, let's focus on what I did. So we did four puts. Execution date was yesterday, 9-16. Expiration date, we'll focus on the first Bitdex. I chose a 9-20 expiration. So I sold a call that expired in one week or essentially four days, right? If you count the days. So let's take a look as some of the details. So that was for one contract, okay? The execution price, like which means like Bitex, this was the stock price at the execution. Bitex was at 24.52. So since I sold a put a $23 strike price, that was 6.2% out of the money. 
because I'm committing to buying 100 shares of Bittex at $23 at expiration at a lower price than the current stock price. So that's considered out of the money, 6.2% out of the money. Premium per share that I did got six, um, 60 cents per share. So there's one, you know, one contract that's 100 shares, 60 cents times 100 is $60. So boom, $60. So far, um, premium kept, you know, this gets adjusted if I close it early. Obviously, I didn't close anything. It's still open. I did have to front $2,300 because the strike price ch chosen was $23. Multiply that times 100, um, 100 shares, and that's what the collateral, you know, this is collateral that gets pulled from my account. Typically, it's the margin, and you know when it gets pulled that way, it gets put on hold, and I don't I don't get charged interest when that happens. So twenty three hundred uh, gets pulled out as collateral. So I calculate you know a, basically a return on investment of two point six one percent, and this is for essentially four days. Um, income per day comes to about fifteen bucks. I mean you can't go wrong there. Uh, return on investment per day comes to 0.65%, which is, you know, really, really amazing. And if I annualize that, of course, you know, these numbers, you know, are they realistic? Maybe, maybe not, but this is what it comes to 238% on an annualized basis. So I know people, they freak out when they get a hundred percent payment, hundred percent yield on um, the yield max funds. But guys, you know, when you trade options yourself, you, you'd be surprised how much money you could really make. Of course, it's super risky. And there's a reason people pay the experts, guys, because it's super risky and it's dangerous. However, my risk tolerance is, you know, it's pretty high. And I'm, you know, I like to gamble more than others, I'll say. So I play it a little differently. Some people may not be as comfortable. Um, but again, I'm just showing you what I'm doing. Hopefully it helps. And then again, I have another uh, let's go to the other Bittex real quick. I decided to sell another put on Bittex. This time I chose an expiration date of next Friday. So that would be for 11 days. Okay, 11 days. So that's one contract. At the time, Bittex was at $24.50. I chose a $21 strike price, 14.29% out of the money, 11 days. So that's pretty good, right? I got, I got 70 cents per share, which is $70. And I had to front $21, right? 21 strike price times 100. Return on investment, 3.33. In the end, I got an annualized yield of that of 110%. So that's really good stuff. So my current position on Bittex is if I go up here, I have no assigned stocks. I always put the assigned stocks at the top. So the wheel is still pending. So the put party is what matters right now. So what do I got going on? I got, oh, I didn't add the 927. Let's go back real quick. So yesterday, what do I got? Let me zoom out. So I got, I added a 23 for yesterday and then a 21. So I did the, I did the 23 and then the, I got another 21 for 927. This was a last minute one, by the way, which is why I didn't add it. So my put party, it's pretty big uh, for Bittex. I have four puts expiring for this Friday. Um, I scatter my strikes because that's how I choose to do it. Uh, I got 19, 21, 22, and 23. Right now, Bittex is at 24.65, so none of them are in danger. And when I say in danger, in danger of assignment. So if, if Bittex closes below any one of those or all of those, then I'll be assigned and have to buy those shares. But I don't really consider that a problem. In fact, I consider that a really good thing because when I get assigned, Guess what, guys? I can play the other side of it, which is selling calls. You know, and it's good to do both sides. Right now, I'm doing one side. I'm selling puts. So when you sell puts, you typically want the underlying to go down. So, and um, luckily yesterday, since I had no calls, I didn't own any shares. I couldn't sell any calls. The fact that Bittex went down, it was an awesome thing. Great timing. So I kind of abused it. I sold two puts. Normally, I do. I sell one put per day, but I had to sell two. So you see the other 21, obviously, for expiration of 927 for the following week. So I have five puts pending on Bittex. Is that risky? Sure. In my eyes, not really. I have not even, I sleep like a baby. I'm not worried one bit. Like I said, I kind of want to get assigned. All right, so what else did I do? I sold puts on TSLL. Now, um, similar strategy, if you look at the two right next to each other. 
obviously execution date was yesterday and I chose expiration dates of this Friday and next Friday, okay? So let's see the difference. So obviously the first contract, four days away, expired in four days, all right, one contract. Uh, stock price, uh, the first one, let me zoom out so you can see the headers. There you go. All right, uh, TSLL was at 1044. I sold a put in the freaking money, you know why? because I don't give a damn of assignment. TSLL, I play much different than others because they're so damn cheap. So I sold a put in the money, in the money, 1050. And guess what, if I get assigned to 1050, great. But in the meantime, since I sold it in the money, I get more premium. I got 55 cents per share, which is $55 in fronted money. I only put up 1,050, right? Look up here. I got 60 bucks on the Bittex, but I had to put up 2,300. For this one, since I went in the money, I got 55 bucks and only, I only put up 1,050, right? So I got, you know, return on investment much higher. You can see 5.24%, and that annualizes to be 40, 477%. But obviously, yes, yeah, super risky in the money. Um, but, you know, define risk. Risk is everyone's own definition. For me, is this risky? No. When I make this trade, I don't even think twice. Boom, boom, boom. Done, done, done. I don't consider this risky. If Tesla has really bad news and they go down 50%, okay, I'm going to feel a little different. I'm not going to lie. That's going to hurt. But, you know, what are the odds of that? I don't know. In the meantime, I'm playing the game. All right. The other contract, this one expires next Friday, 11 days. Uh, at the time, TSLL was at 1061. I sold the put for 950. Uh, that was 10.46% out of the money. So a little more, I decided, all right, let's go a little more conservative here. I got a premium of 31 cents per share, which is $31 in total. I only had the front $950. Return on investment, 3.26%. But if I do that calculation on an annualized basis, that's 108%. All right, so no assigned shares on TSLL. So I'm just going to share my put party. TSLL is currently at 10.59. I got puts, I got three puts for this week, and I got one put for next week. I got a 950, a 10, and a 1050 for this week, and a 950 for next week. Do I want to be assigned this week? Yes, I do. I do. So what do I need to happen? I need TSLL to go down below 1050 or 10 or 950. Which one? What's the sweet spot? My opinion, 949. That way I get all three, 300 shares for the following week. And if TSLL booms up, then guess what? I could sell calls. That's my sweet spot. Uh, most people, they would prefer not to be assigned, but I prefer assignment when I have no shares because I love selling calls because I play them much, much more aggressively when I can and I can generate such good premium. All right, guys. So that was the update from yesterday. Uh, again, I just wanted to share it on the daily video in case... Some of the people that watch me daily do, you know, don't get a chance to see what's going on. So yesterday I made, what was it? You know, if I can highlight this, some there you go. I made $216 in one day, right? I made $216. That's pretty awesome. I know that's not a lot for a lot of people, but think about it. If I did like two more trades, you know, you know, we're talking about pretty decent income. That comes to like $78,000 a year if you make that every day. So, you know, it's no joke. Uh, but again, I just wanted to show you the power of options. Also, for the month of September, I am up to $1,025 now. I am already beating last month's record of $1,021. So clearly, um, you know, I'm being a little more brave. I'm using a little more money. But, you know, I, like I, I told you guys this from the beginning. I'm going to use a little of my money and I'm going to play options. And you can see February made 108, March 260, and so on and so forth. And here we are. Um, and again, I feel more and more comfortable as I go on. So I'll, I'll use more and more of my money for options and I'll use less and less of my money for, you know, paying the fund managers to do it. You know, when I'm retired, I'll do all the options, right? I'll have, well, I'll still have another account probably for the yield max and other funds, but I'll have my own separate account. I'll just do options all day. Why the hell not? It's fun. It's easy. But, uh, but yeah, I just wanted to share that, guys, on the daily video. Um, and, you know, hopefully it helped. If you have any questions about options, feel free to join the Discord and come to the options trading channel. 
it um there's there's a whole bunch of you know everyone is very helpful there so if you have any questions you know on anything um options related uh, there was a guy yesterday he made his first trade right and he did really good i think it's brian s right brian s shout out to brian s congrats on your first trade you know so if you want to learn options come ask him questions that's kind of that's how i learned it someone asked me this morning how'd you learn options i basically watched youtubers and I had, you know, at the time it was a different chat, but I had this guy in the chat who helped me a lot, you know, and he answered all my questions because it is intimidating. Um, so, but that's why I have this YouTube. That's why I have the Discord. It's really to teach people the ins and outs of certain things like dividend investing, options trading, you know, all things investing really. But I, I tend to, you know, love options more and more each day. So I'm, I'm gearing more and more towards that and hopefully can you know help people if even if they don't trade options at least learn about it and i'm different than others because i don't go to the route of iron condor this that the other thing you know because when you're trying to learn the beginning stages you hear like oh what's your what theta or what delta did you pick you're like all right i'm not doing this anymore right and i again i'm different because i like to keep things simple um, I like to use li certain things and that's it. All right. If I make it overcomplicated, I'll never make a freaking trade. But anyway, that's the update for yield max. That's the update for options. I hope you guys enjoyed it. As always, none of this is financial advice. I am not a financial advisor. This video is for fun and entertainment. So hopefully you had fun. Hopefully you were entertained. If not, we will try again tomorrow. Again, when I, when there's no trades, I do add in some stuff. So hopefully you guys hung around um, for the stuff. Um, if you did and you enjoyed it, please hit the like button. Any questions or concerns, leave down in the comments below. If you guys enjoyed that option stuff, I, I do share my, uh, my stuff every Saturday, okay? Every Saturday. That video actually does not do good either compared to my other videos. Uh, but if it does interest you, uh, check out my latest one. Maybe I'll pin the latest one to the top of the comments if it does interest you, okay? All right, uh, I guess we're getting to keyword time, keyword. Um, so keyword today is options. Pretty simple, options, right? It's time to learn it. So if you made it this far in the video and you wanna prove it, I know these are some lame ass keywords, um, but again, I, this is what I thought of just a second ago. So this is all you're gonna get. Today's keyword, if you made it this far in the video, it's options because everybody, in fact, you should write Everybody should learn options, all right? Everybody should learn about options or learn about options. That's the key word. So if you made it this far in the video, all you have to do is type that in the comments. And then when I look at the comments, I know you're, you're a trooper. You made it this far watching a guy talk to a phone in a garage sweating at the same time. Could you imagine that would be your life, right? But it is your life. So since it is your life, you got to put that in the comments that it is. All right, guys, I guess that's it. Um, so that's the update. I hope you guys enjoy your day. Thank you for watching, and I will talk to you tomorrow. Later.